Everybody. My name is Diana Dimas. I am the Interim Director Academic Program Coordinator for the Instructional Innovation Center. We are very happy that you can attend this wonderful event. Welcome to the Hispanic Heritage Month kickoff. Before the presentation begins, I will review a few Zoom etiquettes. This session will be recorded. Should you lose connectivity, please utilize the same link you entered the session. Please ensure that you mute your audio. Additionally, we will have a month long event set. Well, we have a website available um, to view all the events available this month. Please visit the Hispanic Heritage Month website, which will be listed in the chat as well as at the end of the meeting. It is my pleasure to introduce the co host of the Hispanic Heritage Month, Ms. Liz Castillo. Hi everyone, good morning, buenos dias. On September 17, 1968, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the National Hispanic Heritage Week Bill and launched a nationwide celebration that has grown into what is now known as Hispanic Heritage Month. From September 15th through October 15th, we recognize, we honor the heritage the culture and the contributions of Americans from or with ancestors from Mexico, the Caribbean, Spain, Central and South America. Our community is a diverse and complex group of people of different races and from 20 different countries. We speak Spanish, uh, Portuguese, some can speak indigenous languages, and of course, we speak Spanglish. St. Philip's College has quite a lineup of virtual events this year. We are hosting a virtual art gallery to showcase some of our local artists. We are engaging in conversations on social media about what Hispanic Heritage Month means to our campus community. And we have a recommended reading list and we will even be sharing a cooking video. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoy this year's activities. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you the 14th president of St. Philip's College, Dr. Adina Williams Lawson. Thank you, Liz, and thanks to all of the team members who made this celebration possible. Welcome to our heritage celebration. We're celebrating Hispanic and Latino American culture, heritage, and contributions. Today, our occasion is to pause, to recognize the contributions of our Hispanic and Latino communities, and this month-long celebration is woefully insufficient when we celebrate, when we think about celebrating all of the contributions, the history and the legacy of our individuals of Hispanic and Latino descent. At St. Philip's College in 1987, we were federally designated as a historically black college. And just two years later, in 1989, we were federally designated as an Hispanic serving institution. This was roughly 31 years ago that we proudly acknowledged our rich history and milestones. At St. Philip's College, we celebrate that our Hispanic and Latino students have a 68% increase in degree attainment over the past, just the past six years. And this is the highest attainment level of any ethnic group at St. Philip's College. We celebrate a course completion rate at 94%, as well as increases in persistence and graduation rates. We celebrate and proudly recognize our full student organization, the Future United Latino Leaders for Change. They're one of the five chartered student organizations 
OC has helped all students experience a positive college environment, no matter what country of origin they may be from. They have encouraged and supported a, com a completion agenda towards a college degree or certificate and help students search, apply, and submit uh, scholarship applications in support of their career journey. We're very proud of FOSI. We celebrated our own White House superstar. Just last year, we proudly traveled to Washington, D.C., where our own Catherine Cantu was recognized as a White House scholar and presented a research project to be shared with NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. This year, Catherine Cantu, she didn't stop. She was named to the All Texas Academic Team. She has served as the president of our most distinguished student club, the Psi Kappa Chapter of Phi Theta Kappa Honor oh. Society, which mightily has maintained the five-star status under her leadership. We celebrate our art acquisition from Krista Montoya that I proudly display behind me. It blankets the walls of our Watson Fine Arts Center. Montoya locally is known for his iconic murals that, have dis that are displayed around San Antonio. He is designed for the Spurs, the San Antonio Fireworks, El Lanchadora, Chicana, the Squill Box, and then Tony Castro Motors, just to name a few. As an Hispanic serving institution, St. Philip's College celebrates and values the contributions and experiences of all people of Latin descent. We will recognize writers, authors, artists, and your own voice during this celebration period. We value the diversity of ethnicity, race, and cultures like Posey, Mantra, regardless of your ancestral origin. Mexico, Spain, the Caribbean, or Central or South America. Our celebration is about marketing the achievements of all. And lastly, we celebrate the contributions of our own Rosie Castro, an employee at Palo Alto College who is now retired. But I think locally, her contributions are very significant. She produced our twin towers, Joaquin and Julian Castro. These two individuals have served on the forefront of change and courageous leadership. I encourage you to have courageous conversations, take risks, break, and dismantle barriers that exist and lead the agenda for change in your local community, in your state, and ultimately nationally. One person on the forefront of national change is today's keynote speaker, which I am proud to say that I know this individual, Julian Castro. He served as the U.S. Secretary of Housing and Urban Development under President Barack Obama from 2014 to 2017. Before that, he was mayor of San Antonio. In fact, he was the youngest mayor of a top 50 American city at the time. While mayor, he led a strategy to fund our pre-K for SA to boost the enrollment attainment, the educational attainment of our children and in making sure that they were all in an academic setting. In 2012, he gave a rousing keynote speech at the Democratic National Convention, during which he described the American dream as a relay to be passed from generation to generation. In 2018, Little Brown published Castro's memoirs, An Unlikely Journey, Waking Up from My American Dream. It is my pleasure 
to introduce to you our keynote speaker today, Julian Castro. Hey everybody, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the students, faculty, and staff at St. Philip's College. Uh, I know that these are the most unusual circumstances uh, to kick off a fall semester, but I also know uh, how uh, resilient and resourceful the student body there at St. Philip's, as well as the faculty and staff are. Uh, and so I hope that everybody is staying healthy and staying well and off to a good start this semester. I also uh, am happy to join you as you mark Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, I'm here in San Antonio, uh, Texas, my hometown with my family and, you know, a place that is so proud of St. Philip's College as both uh, and a historically black college and a Hispanic serving institution one of the very few in the country uh, to hold both of those distinctions. As we mark Hispanic Heritage Month, we're reminded of the wonderful diversity of our country and the contributions that the Hispanic community, that Latinos, Latinas have made over the generations to define progress and to move our country forward in the public sector, in the private sector, in the, the nonprofit sector, in each and every way through service of country, service in the military, that have made America the special nation that we are today. You know, I grew up with a mom who was a hellraiser when she was young. My mom, Rosie, was a Chicana activist. Uh, she ran for city council in San Antonio in 1971 when she was just 23 years old. She ran as part of a slate called the Committee for Body of Betterment. The Committee for Body of Betterment, there were four people. Back then, they were running on a slate to try and ensure that everybody in the city was invested in, that not only the north side, but also the west side, the east side, and the south side parts of town got money for drainage infrastructure, for educational opportunity, uh, for those things that it takes to have a good quality of life and be able to reach your own American dream. My mom didn't win that election and neither did the other three people that were on that slate. At that time, there were no single member districts. You had to run citywide. Very few people of color, very few women got elected in 1971 or around that time. But on the night that my mom lost, one of the reporters for a local newspaper, either the San Antonio Light or the San Antonio Express at that time, back when we had two papers, asked her about her defeat. And she said, we'll be back. 30 years later, at the age of 26, in 2001, I was elected as the youngest city councilman in modern San Antonio history at the time. When I think back uh, about my own family's experience, I know that that progress that we were able to make uh, is a great example of the progress that our country has made because of the work of so many people in different ways, people of different backgrounds, speaking up at city halls and state legislatures and in the halls of Congress, as elected officials, as citizens making their concerns heard, in the private sector, in boardrooms and in workrooms, moving companies across our country to do better, to be more inclusive. In the nonprofit sector, either through their churches or their community associations or through civil rights organizations, through legal organizations that challenge unjust laws in court, or just as citizens, voting, participating, making their voice heard to elect people who would move our country in the right direction toward more inclusivity, respect for everybody, opportunity for everybody, including the Latino community. And so as we mark Hispanic Heritage Month, I hope that you'll take a moment to learn a little bit more about the heroes who have come from the community, whether it's folks like Dolores Huerta or Cesar Chavez, 
uh, or trailblazers in business or in humanitarian work. Trailblazers in sports, right? Roberto Clemente or so many others. People who have helped define the greatness of our country. And I also hope that you will play your part in making progress possible, however you do it. One of the ways that you can do it is by voting. We have an election coming up, and this is such an important election. Whether you're Democrat or Republican or Independent, whether you've voted many times before or this is going to be your first time to vote, we need your active engagement in our democracy at a time when our country feels very polarized, when the most vulnerable Americans have been hit the hardest by this pandemic, by a deep economic recession, by the fact that our economy has gotten turned upside down. I hope that you will take the simple but powerful step of casting a ballot in November. Early voting starts here in Texas in just a few weeks. I also hope that if you haven't already, that you'll fill out your census form and be counted. Because when we think about resources that are put into educational opportunity, including higher educational opportunity, investments that are made in job opportunities, in um, roads and bridges and infrastructure, quality of life, so much of that is driven by those numbers in the census. And so I hope that you'll stand up and be counted and fill out your census form. Those are two straightforward but meaningful ways that you can be a part of making progress in our community of San Antonio, our great state of Texas, and our beautiful nation. So happy Hispanic Heritage Month. Take care. A very special thank you to former HUD Secretary Julian Castro for that dynamic celebratory speech. We heard the charge, so let's all make plans to vote and to complete our census to be counted. My name is Dr. Sharon Crockett Ray, and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair for the St. Phillips College Heritage Committee, where as Dr. Lawson has acknowledged, we are committed to celebrating all of the beautiful heritages throughout our nation. I want to thank the members of the Heritage Committee and a special thank you to Liz Castillo as the co-chair of the Hispanic Heritage Committee. We invite you to attend all of the exciting events that have been planned for this month long celebration. Of course, all events are virtual and will be most enjoyable. Again, thank you for attending our kickoff and we look forward to seeing you soon. Stay well.